When I first studied the origins of the First World War, I was completely and utterly confused. While I had a vague sense of what the war was like once it had begun, the idea of how it had started remained completely unclear. Over the next few videos, we are going to be exploring this topic in depth, gradually building up a picture of the tragic series of events that led to the outbreak of the war. But before we do this, it might be helpful to have a look at the bigger picture. So in this video, we are going to give a brief overview of the origins of the First World War. And if you are new to this topic of study, rather than worrying about remembering all the details, just try and get a sense of the overall story. If you understand the overall story, all the other piece of information will be much easier to remember at a later stage. So in 10 minutes, this is the somewhat oversimplified story of the origins of the First World War. Although we talk about the First World War as the first ever World War, not everything about the conflict was unusual or original. Large-scale wars involving multiple European states had been taking place for hundreds, even thousands of years. The territories of Central Europe, in particular, had long been a source of conflict, with many different nations taking control of the continent at different times. To understand why war broke out in 1914, we must first look back to the state of Europe 100 years earlier. 100 years before the outbreak of the First World War, in 1814, the Kingdom of France was the preeminent force in Europe. A charismatic leader by the name of Napoleon had won a series of military victories that turned France into a powerful and much feared empire. Events for the French, however, were about to take a turn for the worse. The Empire suffered a catastrophic military defeat in 1815, and this defeat enabled the rise of a new kingdom, called Prussia. Over the following decades, the Kingdom of Prussia grew in strength, culminating with the French Empire being defeated once again in the Franco-Prussian War in 1871. Now, there were three key consequences of this defeat. Firstly, the victory of Prussia led directly to the creation of a powerful new country, that of Germany. Victory over France enabled Prussia to unite the many German-speaking territories in Central Europe, and the result was the creation of a new and potentially very powerful German Empire. France, unsurprisingly, was not happy about the rise of Germany. France had lost more than just pride in her defeat to Prussia in 1871. Until recently, France, under Napoleon, had been the number one military force in the world, but her loss to Prussia signalled that her days of military glory were behind her. Not only had she lost her status as the central power in Europe, but she had also been forced to give up two important territories on her eastern border, Alsace and Lorraine, that had been surrendered to Germany following her defeat. Ever since this defeat, the French were bitterly resentful towards Germany. From now on, France recognised that on her own, she was not powerful enough to fight against Germany. If she was to take on Germany in the future and reclaim her lost territories, she would need powerful allies. And powerful allies were not hard to find. It was not only France that was fearful of the rise of Germany. Two other empires, that of Britain and Russia, were also worried. Britain was another powerful nation in the early 20th century. Over the previous 400 years, she had built up an empire that, by the late 19th century, was the largest the world had ever seen. For decades, Britain had deliberately refused to get involved in European conflicts, sticking to a policy known as splendid isolation. But the rise of Germany, and in particular, the presence of an aggressive new German leader, Kaiser Wilhelm II, was a serious problem. The key to British power lay in her powerful navy and ability to control the seas. Kaiser Wilhelm was well aware of this, and his decision to begin building a powerful navy to counter Britain was understandably seen as a major threat. Russia was also fearful of Germany. Like France, the Russian Empire had also suffered a recent military defeat. Between 1904 to 1905, she had been humiliated in a war against Japan, and this had created instability in Russia and greatly concerned their leader, Emperor Nicholas II. 
The key thing to note here is that in the decades leading up to the outbreak of World War I, Britain, France and Russia, fearful of the rise of Germany, began to consider the advantages of forming an alliance. Seven years before the outbreak of the war, this alliance was formed. In 1907, the so-called Triple Entente was created, binding these countries together in a pact against future German aggression. These countries were not alone, however, in seeking strength in numbers. Germany herself was part of a powerful group of countries. Many years earlier, in 1882, a triple alliance had been formed containing Germany, Austria-Hungary and Italy. Crucially, each member of this alliance promised to support one another in the event of an attack by any other great power. By the year 1907 then, the stage was set for a major European conflict. The system of alliances, created in theory as a defensive system to help decrease the chance of any one country attacking another, had in reality created a highly volatile situation. If any two nations from either side of this alliance system came into conflict, it was possible that all the other countries would be dragged in too. This increasingly tense relationship between several major European powers has been described as a powder keg waiting to explode. But in order for it to do so, it needed a spark to ignite it. Now this is where it gets even more complicated, but don't worry, we will look at all of these issues in greater detail in the future. So for now, just hang in there. At the start of the video, we saw how the collapse of the French Empire allowed Germany to rise to power. Well, a similar pattern was emerging on the other side of Europe. In southeastern Europe, another ancient empire was collapsing. The Ottoman Empire, also known as the Turkish Empire, had controlled large parts of southeastern Europe, a region known as the Balkans, since the 14th century. By the early 1900s, however, they were beginning to lose control. A much younger country was quick to take advantage. The Austro-Hungarian Empire, sensing Ottoman weakness, seized the opportunity to take lands formerly controlled by the Ottomans. The easiest country for them to take was Bosnia, as it bordered Austria-Hungary. And in 1908, Austria-Hungary annexed, so took control, of Bosnia. This event is crucially important. Russia, allied with Britain and France, was not happy with Austria-Hungary's annexation of Bosnia. But why was Russia not happy? Well, the Balkans was made up of people from many different ethnic groups. One of these ethnic groups was a group known as the Slavs. The Slavic people spoke similar languages and shared many cultural and religious beliefs. Crucially, there were strong Slavic ties between Russia and many Balkan countries at this time. Another country in the Balkans, Serbia, was the most powerful Slavic nation and it enjoyed a particularly close relationship with Russia. So when Austria-Hungary annexed Bosnia in 1908, Serbia called upon Russia to come to their aid and help protect the Slavic people. Although Russia refused to get drawn in for the time being, it was clear that tensions were rising in this region. The collapse of the Ottoman Empire had drawn in two powerful countries into potential conflict. It was only a matter of time before this crisis was to re-emerge. After the annexation of Bosnia by Austria-Hungary in 1908, many secret groups were formed across the Balkans who sought liberation from Austro-Hungarian control. One of the more extreme versions of these groups, known as the Black Hand, was willing to do whatever it might take to get rid of Austro-Hungarian influence. And here we arrive at the crucial moments leading up to the war. On the 28th of June 1914, a golden opportunity presented itself to the Black Hand. The heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, was attending a military exercise in Bosnia's capital, Sarajevo. The Black Hand wasted no time in preparing a plan. Seven Bosnian students were trained in preparation to assassinate Ferdinand. And on the 28th of June, Gavrilo Princip, a 19-year-old student, shot Archduke Ferdinand in the throat and his wife Sophie in the stomach, killing both. The political reaction in Austria-Hungary was furious. The Emperor, Franz Joseph, was convinced that the assassination was a deliberate act sanctioned by the Serbian government. 
they sent a set of demands to Serbia, demanding that they accept responsibility and allow Austro-Hungarian police into Serbia to investigate. The King of Serbia, however, although accepting the other demands, refused to allow a foreign police force into his country. Enraged by this refusal, Austria-Hungary, with permission from Germany, invaded Serbia on the 28th of July 1914. Due to the system of alliances, within a week of this event, the First World War had begun. Russia was the first country to act. Given her close connections to Serbia, she prepared for war. Germany, given her alliance with Austria-Hungary, declared war on Russia and then France. And on the 3rd of August, Germany invaded Belgium. By Thursday the 6th of August, all six major countries were in conflict with one another. And the greatest war the world had yet to see had begun. Thanks for watching this video, hopefully you found it useful, and if all of that went over your head, please don't worry. I'm going to be going over all of these issues in much greater detail in future videos. So thanks for watching and see you next time.